Good day to you one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again. Yeah, how comes he's wearing that white jumpsuit? Well, I'll tell you, I'm doing Bee Gees today, spelt B-E-E-G-E-E-S, uh, and, and an abbreviation of The Brothers Gib is what that was named after. The song that I'm going to talk about, though, isn't from the disco era. Um, in fact, it's a little bit later than that. I'm going to be talking about um, You Win Again from 1987. Just particularly love that song. And uh, when I was trying to think of a Bee Gees song to do, I decided on that one. I don't know why. I, I can't explain it. Uh, produced by Arif Mardin and Brian Tench. It's quite brilliant. Don't forget, there will never be a competition in my comments thing that is not spoken about using this face. So if you see anything down there that looks dodgy or suspicious or is telling you you won something, it's a scam. It's a fraud. These people are imposters. Pay no attention to them. And certainly don't give them any money. And certainly don't pay any sort of shipping for a guitar that's never going to arrive. Thanks, guys. Justin Hawkins writes again. Again. Always look for the tick. I'm always, um, what's it called? Verified on all the platforms that I operate on. And if I'm not, it isn't me. Anyway, sorry, enough about that stuff. Let's get on to the Bee Gees. Just to demonstrate the level of adoration that I have towards the Bee Gees, um, a few years ago I asked Chiara Mazzoni, the uh, preeminent um, illustrator who has done the last few Darkness album covers, um, to depict me in a photo editing as the Bee Gees. So if you look on this uh, to the rear, at, sorry, to the left, um, you'll see me as Morris Gibb. Um, this was encouraging for me because I think with the right sort of facial hair arrangement, it means that I could allow myself to just go bald, just keep growing it around the sides, never surrender. And as long as you sort of pair that look with some kind of silky shirt and medallion combination, then you're, you're laughing really, aren't you? It's still, you still look virile and, I don't know, powerful somehow. And, well, let's face it, sexy. I think if you look to the right and you see, you'll see me as uh, Robin Gibb, who I feel of the three brothers Gibb, he, he's the one who most, who I most resemble naturally anyway. So this was an easy transition into Rob, Rob, Robstin. Um, but what was really startling is to discover from, by the, the medium of, uh, of the Photoshop uh, photo editings, if you do a gene splice operation between myself and um, Barry Gibb, the resultant um, organism bears a more than a striking resemblance to Hollywood actor Hugh Jackman. So I think Hugh Jackman is basically, on a DNA level, he is basically just a direct cross between myself and uh, Barry Gibb. So... You're welcome, Hollywood. Nice one. Um, it was released as the first single on the 7th of September 1987 by Warner Records uh, from their 17th studio album, ESP. ESP usually stands for Extrasensory Perception, um, which I think is when people can... Well, Extrasensory per Perception suggests that it's like the sixth sense, really. Um, things that you would have no way of knowing, perhaps seeing the future or understanding another person's thoughts without them having communicated it to you using the traditional... You know what ESP means. Anyway, the song marked the start of the group's comeback, becoming a number one hit in many European countries, including topping the UK singles chart, the first to do so in over eight years, um, and making them the first group to score, to score a UK number one hit in each of three decades, the 60s, 70s and 80s. Formed in 1958, featuring brothers Barry, Robin and Morris Gibb, they wrote all their own hits as well as writing and producing several major hits for other artists like um, I'm in the middle of a chain reaction for Diana Ross and um, I am a woman in love for um, Barbara Streisand. They have been regarded as one of the most important and influential acts in pop music history and they've been referred to in the media as the Disco Kings, Britain's first family of harmony. <laughs> <laughs> like that. <laughs> and the kings of dance music. I'd be pleased with Britain's first family of harmony. Love that. Can you hear the swing on a... Red doll living in the movies. There's a lot of that swingy stuff happening in the 80s. Red doll living in a movie. Hot tramp, daddy's a cutie. 
Actually, that was 1987 as well. God, the charts were full of this sort of swingy groove. I think Ragdoll's a bit faster than that, though. Everybody needs... What a song. This is an, an amazing song. It's Production-wise, that 80s aesthetic has done its best to ruin it, but it's still an awesome song. And it has endured, in my view, regardless of how dated the production sounds. I'm surprised you let me stand down. So, let's not talk about the production. I mean, they look amazing in the video, obviously. They're all, especially Robin. I feel like Robin is a guy that really knew how to wear a beret. Perhaps I should have worn one. Couldn't figure why you couldn't give me what everybody needs Shouldn't let you kick me when I'm down, my baby That's nice, isn't it? That E minor to A7 Find out everybody know that you've been using me I'm surprised you let me stay around you And that's it, so it's all about the, the One day I'm gonna lift a cover and look inside your heart Oh yeah, that's it One day I'm gonna lift a cover and look inside your heart We got a level before we go and tear this love apart There's an under yeah. <laughs> this is so good. So then it goes but after this um, E minor A goes back to a D, which is where the, the sort of key of the song started really. So it's um Then I'm gonna lift the cover and look inside your heart. We got a level before we go and tear this love apart. But that's a really nice chord as well, like a, it's a G minor 7, so. There's no fight, you can't fight this battle of, battle of love with me. You win again, so little time, we do nothing but compete. There's no life on earth, no other could see me through. You win again, some never try. But if anybody can, we can. And I'll be, I'll be, I'll be following you. Oh, girl. Oh, girl. That is Robin's job in this, really, just to say, do the old girl stuff. Oh, girl. Oh, girl. Oh. I'm not sure if he's doing that in head voice or full. It's got an amazing uh, timbre to it. This sort of, you can't quite place which, which part of his body is resonating. It does really sound like his, uh, <laughs> lyrically, he seems to be talking about coercing somebody to be their partner, whether that's for one night of intimacy or for a long-term thing. I mean, he's saying stuff like, I'm going to hit you from all sides, break down your defences, lay your fortress open wide. Nobody stops this body from taking you. I mean... <clears throat> I think if that was written in 2017, 18, yeah, they'd probably hesitate with some of this stuff because it's definitely, it's definitely a bit, a uh, bit strong, you know. But then it's the Bee Gees. They're sort of like the people find them so lovable, don't they? But I think these are serious songwriters, <laughs> and obviously men with actual desires. I swear. It's lovely that my favourite chord my chord changes here is it? I can never 
let you cast aside the greatest love of all. Do 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 Amazing melody, isn't it? So that's the hook, really. You win again. Beautiful. People always talk about you know the the dynamic of um, having siblings in bands, and they're always talking about like I don't know. <laughs> Angus and Malcolm Young, the Gallagher brothers, myself and my brother. But what about Beatles? They've got three brothers. I mean, that's got to be. I mean, that's got to make it more difficult, isn't it? I think that's why people always kind of pigeonhole them as pop because they thought it'd be like a, a Jackson Five, or they thought they were the, the Gib Three. Oh girl, oh girl. Key change. I love it. In the 80s, there were some really unapologetic key changes. There were some that were sort of quite subtle. They would happen in the course of a, a really detailed arrangement, and then like you'd have a meandering chorus, and then when you come back to the verse, like, hang on a second, what's happened there? And then there's sums like this where it just goes... God, I love this song. And I'll be, I'll be, I'll be following. I'll be following you is a bit stalky as well, isn't it? I mean, I'm not suggesting for a moment that this is from the perspective of somebody who's that way inclined, uh, i.e. inclined to stalk you and, you know, really wear you down until you have no choice but to open your fortress and allow that to happen. The lyric implies that the narrator is so determined that it w he probably wouldn't be put off by mere rejection. No rejection's strong enough. Because life's too short, and he intends to make, sh make you realise that... <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Guy's got a great voice. Anybody can, we can. Really nice sort of simple happens on that last uh, revolution. He's talking about a battle of love. There's no fight you can't fight. This battle of love with me, you win again. So, is the love the prize of the, of the battle that he's talking about? Or this battle of love with me, you win again. So little time, we do nothing but compete. There's no life on earth, no other could see me through. You win again. Some never try, but if anybody can, we can. I'll be, I'll be following you. I think he's just talking about fighting for his love. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's not saying, Yeah, you must love me, uh, otherwise I will fight you. No, he's, he's just giving it 100% and making sure that the antagonist in this piece, the, his love rival, if you will, understands the power of his love and how determined he is to hit you from all sides and break down your defences. Using love, though, and loving techniques, and I don't think he's suggesting that he's going to, you know, <laughs> yes, you know, it's, just, it's the Bee Gees. Justin Hawkins rides again. Again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, watch one of these two videos. Keep coming back. I'm going to talk about the Bee Gees more and do other songs, because I just think... <laughs> That is an oeuvre full of amazing hits, and uh, they definitely bear analysis because they're such interesting chord changes. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, nice one, guys. See you later, and rem remember, I'm not doing any competitions in the comments section. All that Telegram stuff is bullshit. Nice one.